Hi everybody, Chris here from Flying Star Astrology and in the news for quite some time we've heard about Taylor Swift having uh, disagreements with Scott Borchetta over her rights to her music. When she happened to be like 15, 16 years old she signed a contract to, um, to go with Scott's label. He hadn't even started it yet when she agreed to, to sign on with him. It was called Big Machine. And at the time she signed the contract, the flying stars weren't that great. So today I want to talk about what's going on with Taylor Swift, Scott Borchetta, Scooter Braun, and the whole big machine ordeal because it makes perfect sense when you look at the flying stars. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Taylor Swift, Scott Borchetta, and Scooter Braun. I don't know if he says Braun or Brown. So I'm just going to go with Brown. Um, so Taylor was just a kid when Scott happened to find her singing in the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville, Tennessee, approached the family and her about signing her to his record label, which he was in the process of putting together. She ended up signing with him um, in um, 2005 when she was like 15, 16 years old. He started the record label in uh, September of 2005 with Toby Keith. Toby ended up dropping out of the relationship shortly thereafter. But anyway, at the time that Scott founded the record label, um, you guys probably don't know this, but companies can have flying star numbers too. They can have power numbers. Just like we've talked about in the past, people have power numbers. It's based upon the date you were born. Companies have power numbers too. It's based on the date they were created. So when the person signs the contract to make a new company, that's the birth date for that company. And it has male or female energy, and that's deter determined by pretty much the industry it's in, or even the person who founded it. You kind of have to play with that a little bit because it's not an exact black and white kind of thing. But anyway, at the time Scott founded Big Machine um, record label, it was it, actually the Flying Stars were fantastic. On the success direction for the business, he had fame and new beginnings, which is a fabulous combination for starting a new business. Relationship direction was not that great because it uh, indicates conflict with people, especially women. So he's likely to have had more disagreements with women who signed with his record label than with men, but it could be disagreements in general. And then uh, wisdom direction, this is actually really good for um, for doing something in the arts. So music is perfect, but it could have been anything creative in the arts. It could have been dance, acting, anything like that. So in general, the combination for, him, the, for the date that he founded the company was really good, which is why he made so much money um, doing, doing this business. Now, um, at the time that he signed the contract with Taylor, which was just a couple months later in 2005, his own personal energy was different. It was different than his company's. So the date of the contract between these two, Taylor Swift and Scott Borchetta, he had what's called the robbery star sitting on his success direction, and it's tied to a partnership. So it means, um, it, it usually means you're the one who loses money. It doesn't usually mean the other way around, but somebody's getting robbed in this particular relationship. Um, the other thing that it, uh, he had was a double disaster star on his relationship direction. So even though fame was there for the month, it was not in a good way. So indicated problems for their relationship or anybody, well, anybody who would have signed on that date with him. Um, for his wisdom direction, he also had the disaster star. So any new things that he would have started would not have worked out well based upon when he signed the contract with Taylor Swift. Now we all know he made a shit ton of money with her as his, um, you know, working with her because she did all the work. She did all the work making the music and then he did the job of promoting. So it would seem to indicate that these are wrong, right? because it, it was financially prosperous, but it really wasn't because there's all kinds of conflict indicated around the relationship. So it's likely that their relationship was always a little tumultuous and there was always um, concern 
uh, like not quite trusting. And it could have been going both ways, or it could have been one direction, or it could just, you know, it could have been Taylor not trusting him or him not trusting her. But the whole relationship, their lack of trust, um, disaster, conflict, things of that nature. So it was likely rocky from the beginning. And, I, you know, I haven't read the contract that they signed, but from what I've read online, and there's always, you know, the, the curiosity, are you reading what's actually true? What I've read is that uh, the contract indicated that she was not the owner of her music. Like, that's something she agreed to. And then later on, she tried to buy rights to her music, and he offered her, uh, I believe that for every album she made, she would get back one of the original albums that he had the rights to. So uh, I don't think she agreed to that because the, the um, company ended up being sold. So anyway, she never agreed to that situation. So setting up that um, contract that way where she didn't own rights to her own music that she wrote and that um, he helped her promote created this conflict. Now, from what I understand, this is pretty common. Like this sort of um, new artists don't own their own music. I, I understand that's pretty common. I don't know. I'm not in that industry. So correct me if I'm wrong. Put a comment down below and tell me. Um, but when you're with somebody who is like strong-willed and talented as we know she is just from her personality over the years everybody's seen it this is bad this is like really bad you could have not picked a worse time or they could have not picked a worse time to sign this contract and especially her since she's still um, she's still in the business of writing music still producing her music I'm um, still well known um, you know throughout the music community and fans absolutely love her so when Taylor signed the contract, yeah, let me take a look real quick here. Yeah, okay, sorry, I just had to check something out real quick. When Taylor signed the contract, um, she had the double conflict star sitting on her success direction. So that's not a good way to start a relationship, right? Especially a business relationship because this is about her career. On her relationship direction, um, she had the windfall star on partnership, so that could have been good, but I have another note I wanted to write about here. What did I want to say about that? There was something else I wanted to say. Yeah, but it can also create conflict and bickering. So it could have been they've been bickering since day one. There's conflict on her success. And then um, this is all about financial loss. So making a decision, because it's wisdom, that creates financial loss and that's eventually how it worked out of course so she did make money in this particular relationship she became very famous but it was it's not a good setup so if you can have better stars i mean who's come who's gonna feel sorry for her that she's successful famous lives a fabulous life but for her personally not not a great time to sign a contract if if it were me giving advice i would say wait because this isn't, you know, your success is going to come just because of who, who you are and her energy number is all about money anyway. Um, so she's going to make money no matter what she does. Of course, she didn't know that, right? Because she doesn't know her flying stars. But her energy number, all about money. All about money. So her whole life, she's going to be wealthy. Even if he kept everything she ever wrote for the rest of her life, she would still be wealthy because of the power number that she has that she was born with so we'll talk about power numbers and what your power numbers mean at another time his his power number is all about relationships um, and primarily relationships with women so for him his whole life his relationships with women are going to be important so it's it's unfortunate that this situation like the timing was terrible for both of them um, at the time that, and then, so fast forward, right, to 2018, and um, Scooter Braun decides that he's going to buy Big Machine from Scott. So at the time that Scooter buys Big Machine, there's a robbery, like double, robbery starts sitting on his success direction. So I know it costs like $300 million for him to buy this company. So not a, it's not that it, may not be worth that it's just that if you're looking at the flying stars in consideration with what you're paying for it 
this would not have been a good year to buy anything, honestly, because you're get, it's going to create financial loss for you. You could you could use this as a year to invest. So maybe he's thinking of this this as an investment, and then it's a windfall of some kind. Um, but with the combination of the other stars, not great. Uh, relationship direction, conflicts with women, bickering, arguing, uh, disagreements, lawsuits, gossip. Terrible, terrible, terrible for relationships. And then wisdom, um, the combination is actually good for, um, for, for music. So the decision to buy the company wasn't a bad one because it's good for music. It's just going to cost him cost him more this year and then obviously the relationship side of it uh, bickering conflict with Taylor Swift and there may be other people involved I'm not really sure but really a not a good time from that standpoint for him in the long run it'll probably work out because this is really could be seen as an investment and making an investment in music this year is good so at the time that Scooter bought Big Machine was June 2018 and the stars on Taylor's direction were conflict, argument, bickering, gossip, sitting on her success. So I know she came out publicly and um, commented that she didn't have rights to her music and was disappointed and called in the help of the Carlisle Group which gave Scooter the funding to buy the company. Um, and she did that all publicly, I believe through Twitter, Instagram, some social media platform. So that, that energy is all sitting here. The relationship star, she's got the disaster star sitting on her relationships. Not, again, not a good year or not a good time for her when he bought it, not that she had any control over that. And then also um, wisdom direction. Decisions she would make this year would cost her money. And you know, this him buying this uh, the, him scooter buying big machine from Scott Brown or Scott Borchetta costs her money because she can't get that she can't get the rights back now. And I guess you know, like there's this whole public discussion and argument about who you know why she can't have the rights. She's not allowed to perform her music. I know there are two events that are coming up and she asked if she could perform songs, like she wrote, reached out to Scooter to ask if she could perform songs uh, from the music she wrote, but that he owns, and they said, no, you can't do it. So, you know, terrible, terrible, not really good for her. But she did sign a new contract with Republic Records, so what does that look like for the future for her? Okay, so on her success direction, she's got the Disaster Star, it's doubled. At the time she signed this, she had a double disaster star on her um, on her new contract for her, for her career. So not a good not a good thing. It's not going to be a good situation for her. Um, it may look like it now, and we haven't heard, but the timing of this again is terrible. It's it's even worse than when she signed with um, than when she signed with Scott. So, uh, you know, that remains to be seen what happens there. But I would, again, would not have advised doing that, signing a contract right now. She, if she would have waited till next year, I mean, who's going who's gonna to not buy Taylor Swift records if she waits an extra six months to put one out? Nobody, right? Everybody who, who loves her is going to buy her music. I think a big challenge for her is maybe patience and wanting to do things right away. Um, but you know that's flying star analysis for another day so anyway terrible terrible time terrible terrible year to be signing a new contract or doing something new with your career uh, relationship star conflict again uh, and financial loss so for her financially even though she make million, may, may make millions and millions of dollars and continue to own the rights to her music it's not a good financial deal for her like there's something in the contract that's not going to be good for her financially in the long run uh, wisdom direction this is actually good like good in terms of creating relationships with people but there's something in the contract that's not good I don't know what it is because I don't have the contract but there's something in here that is not is not to her benefit and so we may see this come to an, an early end. Um, 
Yeah, just, I can't even say how bad it is. It's like bad all over the place. Not even just a little bad, like horrible, terrible bad. So what do you do in a situation like that? Well, you wait, you wait. So this is, this is the thing with flying stars. I did a reading for a lady yesterday from uh, England and she said, this is scary accurate. Yes, I know, that's why I'm doing it because it is so flippin' accurate, it, it is scary. Now, is this, is this like psychic stuff? No, it, there's nothing psychic about it. You have to know something about the people in order to be able to read the stars. It's kind of like going to the doctor. You don't go to the doctor and say, what's wrong with me? And expect them to figure it out. You go to the doctor and you say, hey, here's what's going on with me. Can you tell me what that could be? Okay, well, let's look at you. Let's look at your history. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at their history. I'm looking at what's going on with them. And then I'm looking at the flying stars and saying, oh, well here, this makes perfect sense. So it's like putting a puzzle together. It really is. Um, but it's an interesting puzzle. It's a fascinating puzzle. And usually when things go well, people aren't interested in their stars because they're like, oh, I'm doing things great. You know, I'm in the flow. I'm, the universe has got my back. I've got it all figured out right now. But the thing is, flying stars change. They change every month. They change every year. So this year may be great, but next year may not be great for what you're doing right now, but it may be great for something else. If you don't know what your flying stars are, you're not gonna know that, and then you meet resistance, then you, you know, like the flow doesn't work. You're not able to, you're not able to make progress in what, you're, what you did last year that was working so well. Why? You don't know why. It's because of the flying stars. The flying stars are always telling you. It's like the universe is telling you, look, here, this is the time to do this. Or it's saying, look, Here's a time to step back. Here's a time to learn. Here's a time to change jobs. Here's a time to start a relationship. Here's a time to end a relationship. Here's a time to move your house. Literally, it can be that specific. It really can be that specific. So that's why I love flying stars. And for me, it's like, it's so easy. You just look at it and you go, well, it makes perfect sense. So anyway, just got off on a tangent there. So in the future, we can see, uh, let's keep an eye on her contract with Republic Records. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Republic Records, um, because it doesn't look good. Like it's, it's just not beneficial. Something's gonna happen that's not, not to her benefit. But in the long run, that may be good because then she could sign a different contract. It could even be with them on a different date at a different time where the energy is better for her and more supportive of her. But again, like I said, her energy number, her uh, power number, which is based on your birth date, is all about money. So she's never gonna not have money. She will always have money. Even if money goes out, even if she's broke for a while, it will come right back in. People with this energy number always have money around them. That's just the nature of it. Um, Scooter Brown, this is kind of interesting. I. I have, you know, like I watched the Justin Bieber movie when that came out because my daughter was really interested and that was really good actually. And I know he's the, um, like the manager for, for Justin Bieber and um, Ariana Grande and some other people, but his energy number is all about himself. His, his, his power number is power number one. Power number one people are me, 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 me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if you know how to work with those people. Like, you know how, if you knew that you were working with a me, 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 me kind of person, you know how to interact with them. So also knowing people's birthdays and their power numbers can be beneficial to you in the work that you do, in the clients that you work with. If you knew their power number, you'd know how to relate to them, right? Or if you have employees and you can't figure out why is this person not on board with what I'm trying to get them to do? Or why are they not, like, how do I motivate them? If you know their power number, then you know how to motivate them because you can work with their energy. Um, so anyway, Scooter's always going to be about Scooter. And that's, that's not a bad thing. You know, the, we need all kinds of people in the world because everybody helps us grow, right? Even people that we get along with, people that maybe we don't get along with so well, um, but everybody helps us grow. So it's not that Scooter's a bad guy. He's just gonna always be about me, myself, and I. How do I make more money? How do I uh, experience more success? How do I 
um, do other things that are beneficial to me, 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 me. That's just the energy of, of his particular number. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you understand why this is going on now. It's all of the flying stars tell you why this is going on. It's not even a mystery, but I like to tell other people what's going on because now it's not a mystery to you. To everybody else, it's like, oh, they're fighting again. They're fighting again. Let's watch and see what's going on. The flying stars tell you why they're fighting. It tells you how this all evolved, when this all evolved. So that's pretty fascinating. So if you like this, click the thumbs up button. Go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I make a new video. Uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, if you want to know your power number, go to my website flyingstarastrology.com. Just put your name and email in there and I will send that information right over to you. It tells you your best, your four best directions based upon your birthday. And um, so when you watch these videos, you can see how uh, the flying stars affect you. Not for this one in particular, but I do other flying star videos where I talk about the flying stars and their directions, which in my report, I tell you what your best directions are. I tell you what these stars mean and how they could possibly affect you for the month and for the year. So I hope you found that helpful and I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye.